I, I think uh, I think it's good to start with the scleral fixation because that was one of the oldest technique, and now we are moving to other glue IOL or Yamane's technique or uh, what uh, Nivian has popularized now. So I think it's sequential. Let's go with that. So. The basically, uh, the commonest technique what we use is ab externo four point fixation. The advantage is it enables to deal with the vitreous capsule remnants. Basically, complete vitreochromy is done in all the eyes, remove all the remnants, so that that gives a better centration because you have I mean, not having mechanical some tissue shifting the eye well to one side. Infusion cannula, I prefer all these eyes because it helps to maintain intraocular pressure while making proper placement of suture. Limbal, corneal, or scleral marking ensure systemic 180 degree. We'll come to that that video presentation slowly. Now, all these patients we all prefer now. We know as scleral flap, it helps to bail out in case sometime you cannot rotate the eye inside the eye. There is reduced chances of suture exposure erosion in a post-operative period, and there is reduced chances of late onset infection as well. So, what we need to learn is the surface anatomy of ciliary sulcus. When you look at it, here you have major major arterial circle here, two art anterior ciliary artery and long posterior ciliary joining here, you want to avoid this area. And what really you want fixation in a ciliary sulcus, what it means, it is between ciliary processes and back of the iris. And this is a space and this is what your ideal aim is. And where is this space is when you look at it. So approximately when you have the width is somewhere around 3.39 micron and you have a distance between surgical limbus, that is blue line you talk about and ciliary sulcus. It varies, vertical diameter it is 0.83 millimeter and horizontal meridian it is around 0.46. So ideal location when you want to place your suture should be somewhere around approximately you take around 0.5 millimeter from the limbus, not two or three millimeter from the limbus, then you are land up somewhere here through the ciliary processes. And that is what ideally when you aim for, when you really want to in a ciliary sulcus. So yes, uh, I will with one or two eyelets on each side are prefer because there's ease and accurate placement for a suture and it reduces the chances of slippage or tilt and you have a foldable oil all over now. So coming to the step-by-step -step approach, so as I said, total vitrectomy with a removal of capsular remnants, as you see here, cleaning the area, RK marker, I probably mark the center of the cornea and use RK marker to get a precise 180 degree of two point for fixation, generally it's convenient to have a IOL placement haptics in a horizontal meridian, fixation sutures. So what I prefer is this is a limbus is marked. Beyond that, we make a scleral flap. So suture distance I aim for one millimeter apart and then we have better coverage. So approximately this flap will be three millimeter by two millimeter. Uh, partial thickness scleral flap, approximately half the thickness. And because IOL is around 6.5 millimeter with which you have label, so limbal section will be somewhere around 6, 6.5 or even up to 7 millimeter you can go. And uh, once you clean everything, the section is ready, get the uh, flap ready. You can do even scleral tunnel as well. This is just a technique we used to use previously for uh, 10-0 or 9-0 proteins, so straight needle, both ends, the needle comes out here on both the sides. You can choose whether superior or inferior suture first, but what you need to do is, depending on how you place, the one suture goes from below upwards through the IOL, and when you other suture you put, it goes this way around because that tilt of the IOL is taken care of when you place this suture, and accordingly, now this is 27 gauge bend needle which I am using to help me out to guide my this uh, 10 0 or 9 0 proline needle because sometimes what happens when you pass this needle here, it can get through, you pierce through the one of the some tissue here and get stuck there. So you ensure you have a clear passage. This is uh, out here and this railroad technique, this needle comes out. And the same technique you follow on other side. You can either pass suture one side, finish and go out and then other side or one one suture either side and then go back either way is a surgeon's convenience. And this is needle is out. You place the temporary suture here. Uh, you need to open the section here. Of course, a fake eye obviously you are going to make section now. This this has I had a nucleus drop and we have to remove the eye uh, lens and, and then so because hard nucleus and then subsequently. So what happened here is when you place the lens, ensure the suture not entangling, but you guide this uh, 
leading half brick, you have to play, uh, guide it in the sulcus. If you allow it to dip, it will get stuck somewhere near ciliary processes. So it has to go precisely in a ciliary sulcus just behind the iris and then pull this suture on either side. And once you put a temporary knot, close this section first. You have a normal intraocular pressure because eye is hypotonus collapsing. Then obviously placement will not be accurate enough. So before finalizing the suture on either side, you first close the section, then finalize the knot and check the balance on either side and ensure that you rotate the knot inside the eye or through the so needle track basically. Now it is easier to rotate through because where 27 gauges needle is used for tracking, that becomes easier to rotate the knot. And at the end, if you want to put the flap, use with a suture, or you want to cover with a glue, it's a surgeon discretion. And this is a standard technique previously used to do, and this is another one. Nowadays, we switch to most of us Gore-Tex suture, just short clip here. What I prefer nowadays, because the needle is a big one, curd, you don't get straight needles, so I use instead of this, other part is okay, but directly I put 225 gauge trocars here. So that will help me to uh, hold the suture and pull it back. These are scleral and uh, corneal marking. So ensure this IOL is placed position properly. These are already Gore-Tex put through the uh, like eyelets and cut off the ends. And this is easier using so all VR surgeon. We, we, all of us, we feel more comfortable using this technique. Just hold with the 25 gauge forceps, pull both the sutures out one after another. Again, while getting suture out, ensure they don't get entangled. Technically, is much easier, and because suture is bigger one, easy to handle. And as far as we know, this suture is supposed to be long, lasts much longer than uh, proline. Okay, the similar technique is followed in other side. And once you have this suture out, take the cannulas out. Again, put the slip knot here. I mean, temporary knot here. Similar knot on other side. Placing the IOL similar way. There's not much change in the technique. Just ensure this they don't get loop or entangle around your haptic or in between two sutures. Just guiding the And when you pull this suture, once you are in, this pull itself is dial the IOL in position when it is in a sulcus properly. Don't release the IOL halfway through because otherwise it sinks down and then it will not go in a sulcus. We have to reposition it later on then. So just go slowly. Hypotony is because of in between I wanted to just switch off the infusion because uh, iris was prolapsing. So ensure that you pull the suture adequately on either side. And when you pull on either side, as you see here, now, and if it's IOL is in sulcus properly, even if you do not tie the suture, it will not slip posteriorly, stays there. The only difficulty here is suture being a thick one, it's not that easy to rotate the knot inside the eye. So you really have to sometimes push inside rather than rotating it in. So just cutting off suture and another practical difficulty because of the cannula system and we have partial thickness blab, sometimes it leaks. So I prefer to use glue to uh, uh, stick those flap back. So here sometimes you literally have to push this knot inside. So both the knots are rotated, but then suture is like little bit pliable. It becomes flattened and easy to, I mean, not that difficult. So that's what ends with and cover with a uh, uh, glue generally I prefer. So to conclude, Technically, it's relatively difficult and time-consuming technique, but it's time-tested. Suture SFIL works well in eyes with a good visual potential. However, there are increased chances of suture breakage with time. We do not know. We do not have long-term experience with uh, Gore-Tex now, but with uh, proline, we have almost 15 to 20 years of experience and quite a few patients. We are having a suture snapping and they are coming back. And that's why we are switching now to Gore-Tex IOLs and newer new IOL designs are coming and obviously techniques are evolving, which will be discussed in subsequent uh, talks. I take this opportunity to invite all of you to our next uh, Retina Summit, which is scheduled on 30th June and 1st of July. Thank you very much for patience hearing. Thanks, Manish, once again.